Hello, welcome to another episode of Test Chamber. I'm your temporary host, Jeff Gork. Today, joined by Tim Turry. Hey. And Mike, the intern. Hey. I don't know your last name. And Smith. today, we're looking at Zombie U. So yeah. here we go. Tim, show us some Zombie U. And I think we are going to start in with a new game here. Um, I can't quite remember how it sets everything up, uh, but it's pretty light in story on the front okay. end. I think it might just be like, oh my god, there was an apocalypse with zombies. It must be pretty demoralizing to actually die on chicken. Yeah. And you're like actually below a chicken. The alchemy of wealth from Mike the air will bring a second <laughs> Here it is, they're setting it up. Mankind. So Copernicus this and whatnot. This is the newest plague. Land. And those men who are not prepared will succumb to its foul clutches. Ooh. For God shows they kept taking no pictures, though, of that one guy. And he was very patient. His he words. stayed still. Thus will the end come, and the world right. made unworthy in his eyes. Look at that. This is London. You got the UK here. Anarchy. Yeah. Got some crows. Crows are a recurring theme throughout the game. So it's like condemned, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that is a good point. So this, these All guys right. are foraging. Some grade A foraging going on here. Mm -hmm. Some dead bodies, formerly zombies probably. Now on the small screen, you're seeing... Same thing. The same thing. Yeah. So, so take a look at that. Also take a good look at that uh, sort of gritty, uh, filthy camera lens mm -hmm. effect. Uh, get used to that, because that is persistent throughout the entire game. And there is no option to turn it off. And it looks worse when you look into the light. I'll show you that. Yeah. Now, the characters in this, you're seeing this guy, presumably he's you, or is he just some guy? Because you, you play a whole bunch of different characters. That Random ciphers. Right. Yeah. Like in, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a rogue. Yeah, style. there is some roguelike things going on. All right. As your buddy yes, talks you. to you throughout the entire game. Yeah, and so you go into the uh, into the, the subway, and that's kind of where your hub is. And you use the sewers throughout the game, kind of to transport yourself and navigate one who's underground um, to get to an apartment building or a grocery store or okay. a nursery or some British monument. All right, so here we are. So I'm gonna go down this way. Um, and this is a straight up survival horror, right? If you play it, yeah, it is. Like I mean, a regular action game, you're gonna get annihilated. Absolutely, yeah. Limited resources, you know, limited inventory. Um, you got a safe house. You can only save when you get back to the save room. Uh, zombies can one shot you pretty much at any moment if you let them get in too close. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Take a look at that. Just. Right in there. I gave this a 5 out of 10 okay. in our review. Um, I, got, I have my flashlight on right now. If you turn it off, you can't see really anything. And it's constantly draining, so you have to turn it off in order for it to uh, power back up. And you get larger batteries or no. anything like that? No. And you know, the thing is, like, there'll be tension when you're... You see that little flash? That awful texture? Yeah, it's just like, guess what? You're playing a goddamn zombie game. So this is the safe room. I have to turn on the generator. That's what's up. There's my bed. You take a little zombie nap. Is that advanced time? Is there like a day-night cycle or anything just, like that? Or? No, it's just the only way you save. Okay. Um, gosh, is this the D-card over here? He's probably saying important stuff to us, huh? Well, you can scan the environments using the power. Yeah, I just the, got it, actually. Go. Look. So I can take a look around. You can use the, the gyroscope here. Right. So I can look over at Mike here and get what's in there. No, negative, nothing in there. Uh, You're gonna do that a lot. Just scan, scan everything in a room. It's kind of like the scanner in uh, Resident Evil Revelations. Yeah, that's a good. Call that? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's really similar to that. But what I liked about that is you could only scan things if there was something to scan. Like if there was an item in a room, you that's the only thing that would pop up on the scanner. You wouldn't just be scanning like dr drawers and cabinets only to find out that there's nothing in it. So there's a lot more trial and error in this game? Yeah, it's just empty scanning, um, which gets tedious. Especially since like, yeah, so if you don't like the gyroscope, you can lift it up like this. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to, you, and you can use the right analog stick to do this, okay. which is fine, and then kind of like fine tune with that. Um, kind of similar to like aiming in Ocarina 3D, uh, but 
even if you do that with the right analog stick, you have to at least lift this up all the time. Oh, okay. And sometimes you'll be like trying to examine a puzzle on the wall, and and you know you you can't go like this and then look up there because it's a different camera angle. You have to be like looking at these pu these puzzle numbers, and uh, it turns out you know it's kind of annoying to have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I wish that there maybe could have been optional at a certain point. But so when you're not scanning the room, how much time would you say you're looking between the TV and the screen? Like what? Well, your inventory is all on here, so um, I'd say it's probably 25% on the gamepad and then 75% of the game. I feel like that'd be pretty annoying to scan like 360 degrees if you're sitting on something like this. Or do you just back out and then yeah. start behind you? Yeah, um, and there is a quick turn button too in case you want to do something like that. But, you know, I was playing and I was in my my office chair, which... That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect, but I don't know how many people are going to be playing this game in an office chair. Like, we're sitting yeah. on a couch, this is the way mm -hmm. to do it. So take your little zombie nap, uh, sleep on the sleeping bag, not in the sleeping bag. Feel I like to you. assume that it's so that they don't get their legs all bunched up and have to do this impromptu potato sack race away from a f horde of zombies. That's probably a good assumption. But it's probably just because that would be hard to animate. Put my right. flashlight back on so I can see. Also, I want to just note, I mean, I don't think this game looks that great. We'll, we'll see more of it, um, and you can kind of make the, the call for yourself, but I'm sort of unimpressed by this being, you know, Nintendo's first HD console, and this is the first, like, triple A-ish um, uh, new IP, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I think it could be better looking. And it's exclusive to the Wii U. Yes, also, this is. It's not yeah. like Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed or Batman. It's not going to be on anything else. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and there's there are less colors. Um, now melee is a big part of this too, right? Yeah, you ready your uh, attack. This is another thing I don't like about it. So if you just hit the right stick, you do a shove, mm -hmm. and that's great. Like that, I had that in Left 4 Dead 2. You could do that uh, Left 4 Dead 1. But it was a different button. Um, you have to actually ready it as if you're looking down the iron sights in a Call of Duty game, and then then you hit the right. But if you don't get the timing quite right and you hit it first, then you'll just be holding it down. Like you'll just there'll be nothing. So essentially, when you're attacking a zombie, you have to be going like this unless you get the timing perfect. Um, and I did get the timing down really well. I could kill zombies without taking any damage at a certain point, as long as it was a one-on-one. -on -one. But it just wasn't satisfying. You mm -hmm. just end up, it takes like eight or nine hits on a zombie. You'll, you'll hopefully see here. Oh, I have to take that guy's pack too. And um, you primarily have the cricket mat too, right? Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. The, you may not be able to see that well, but like you're staring at this cricket bat for most of the game. You think that the textures could have been a little bit sharper. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Shaun of the Dead, I presume. Yeah. Especially with the London setting. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the bar really got raised for melee combat. I mean, first Left 4 Dead, and then even more so in Dead Island. I'm completely with you. And it was it's hard for me not to compare this experience against those. And I think that the weight and impact and, and ease of the melee combat in both of those examples is just far and away more satisfying than this. Um, especially with just like how many hits it takes to take down a zombie. I understand that zombies are tough, but you know, maybe you can let me take out its legs with it, or just mix it up a little bit. Um, so there's no contextual damage. It's either, you, do they stagger if you hit their legs? Um, no, it's just it's either you've hit the zombie or you haven't. Okay. So if you hit their legs several times, the top of the head will eventually get smashed in. Is that? Uh, well, I guess you can't even crouch on your own, so it's not like you could do that unless they're above you. Okay. So what is this? Wii U gamepad prompt for it. Is there something in this room that's useful? Oh, he's they're checking out my backpack, so I can equip uh, my handgun there and bring a um, med kit over there. And so now those are all uh, one click away. And I can reload this since I have ammo. Mm -hmm. So I can just quick press that, it'll prompt me. Um, turn off that so I'm not wasting batteries and then switch back to my cricket bat. All pretty normal stuff. If you played a DS game, you know, right. that's, that's pretty much stuff you've come to expect, but it is frustrating to, even if you were like playing the game like this, like having to look down and back up, sure, maybe it sim simulates um, what it would be like to have to like glance through your pack during an actual zombie apocalypse, but 
I don't find it that satisfying. Um, I have to go get a key card now, sorry. Is uh, ammo pretty scarce? Yeah, it's incredibly scarce. But at a certain point in the game, I just started shooting dudes that I'd normally use a cricket bat on, cricket bat on just to avoid the melee combat, because it's so tedious. Give me a sec, I'll I played some multiplayer with you, and um, the gunfire sounds awful. Like the actual sound of yeah, it? Yeah, it just isn't particularly impressive. You need a key card it just sounded like help. air guns so first time well. I yeah. heard it. Use your pals environment yeah, I you know there are just a couple different sounds for the cricket bat hit, hitting a zombie's head. It's it's not the most overwhelmingly immersive audio experience, I'd say. You know, you hear the same zombie noises over and over again. Okay, come on. Uh, one trick I found it's kind of a little exploitative is like you know he's coming on over and then you hit him and then he gets in the ground and you have to finish them like that so you can just kind of wait for them to cross over these barriers and they always fall and then that can save you a little bit of time trying to kill them uh, which is which is nice but it, it again it felt exploitative um, so I do have to scan this room what's going on in here I have a loot negative this must be the key card so do down zombies tend to have pretty useful stuff you find yourself looting a lot or uh, I'd say probably one in six zombies will have something, maybe. Um, if I had a hammer, I could use those planks to batten down the hatches, and that will buy you some time if a zombie is banging on the other side of a door. Now, I noticed there was a reference to uh, the supermarket, and while you were uh, playing it for review, we kind of wandered over, and it, it's kind of funny. There's these signs that have a lot of text on them, and, everything, and then at the very bottom of these signs, it's just placeholder text. Where yeah. It's not like... Well, the resolution isn't great enough. It's like someone just typed in a bunch of garbage. HD cable, L, yeah, just every <laughs> every letter. And it kind of, I don't know, takes you out of it a little bit, you know. Yeah. Especially a game that's supposed to be so immersive when you are seeing like, oh, well, they just didn't finish these this texture for this, you know, in-game asset for this mm -hmm. fake store sign. And all the signs, I mean, there's like a variety of different signs and they all have just garbled text on them. And you know, really strange. in... in Games like this, like for example, like, oh, like look, there's a mattress pushed up over here, like someone was probably living down here, there's a backpack, there's sort of this uh, environmental storytelling because mm -hmm. the narrative isn't super heavy in this game. You know, someone didn't have time to get their shoes before a zombie attacked him, maybe. So you're exploring and paying close attention to the environment, and when there's placeholder text on something, it's just like, oh, I just feel like I was sort of punished for looking too close. Mm -hmm. um, and then you do get taken out of things, uh, out of environments. Uh, also, this this is weird. It looks like a Kinect sensor person, like how blurry it is. Um, so there are some transition phases. I also note that there are certain doors that will have to load. It's not necessarily like, oh, you know, this key card takes a while to scan. It's just like, this door is loading, it says loading. But while you're waiting for the door to load, a zombie can be just gaining on you. So you could get eaten because you have no more ammo left and you have one hit because you're waiting for a door to load. Which, if that's a way that you're going to die in a survival horror game, if you like survival horror games, that is unforgivable. Yeah. Like, it just, the, maybe that loading screen should happen in a safe zone then. Um, so you're almost forced to kill all the zombies before you go through a loading screen door? Yeah, and that's if you know that that's a loading screen door. You could just be surprised by one. And these are maybe some nitpicky things, but when you're playing a game that's trying to be as punishing as this, um, you want it to be fair. It least. needs to be tight, yeah. And, and that's another thing to mention is if you're not aware, uh, every time you die in this game, your previous character becomes zombified, you spawn as a new survivor in the safe room, and you're tasked with going to hunt down your former self to get your gear back. Um, that's a really cool idea. It is. I had one of my guys, though, my former zombies just disappeared. They weren't there. So my gear was gone, and I had to start from scratch, which was annoying. Um, so I don't, that only happened to me once. Uh, the game also crashed on me once. I played it and reviewed it on retail. Um, so there are, some, there are some problems with this game. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of uh, ignoring my review and giving this a shot. That was one of the cool things that I heard about this game, because I mean, like, Daisy, Warzy both have that kind of permadeath where you lose all your stuff, but then the added feature of being able to go back to your undead self sounded awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a cool concept. And you know what? Like, 
I think that conceptually there are so many cool things going on in this game. I really like the idea of managing your inventory on the the, the gamepad, but it's like, oh well, these these icons are a little too small, and you know, I'm not enjoying that, uh, and it's easy to screw up. Did I get a headshot? No. There it goes. I feel like this was a key card door. You've got an online component as well, right? Yeah, like it's it's pretty minimal. Like you're there's sort of like score competition, and uh, your your zombie can infect like other people's games, and they can try to go like hunt it down and take your gear and stuff. But it didn't really change the experience mm -hmm. for me. We played, like I said earlier, uh, we played some multiplayer. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on that? Um, you know, the multiplayer mode. One character uses the. Uh, also, pay close attention to what I'm doing here. This is. Pretty much it. This is what you're doing for about 60% of the game. Um, he's going to take a lot of hits. Parts of his head are going to come off, and then you finish him. And if you like, if that looked just great, <laughs> like if that just, man, I could do that for a long time. And I don't even really care about the gunplay. That's just bonus. For 12. Then hours. by all means, just mm -hmm. pick this up right away. Uh, but that gets so tedious, especially with the cheap shots and just like the rhythm of combat is hard to get used to. And um, zombies can one-shot you if you don't, you know, if you're not careful. But uh, the, the the online component is basically, or I'm, I'm sorry, the multiplayer component is I'd be using the gamepad and I'd be having, having like this RTS overhead view of a map and just popping zombies in wherever I wanted. Mm -hmm. You'd have a game to uh, a pro controller or a Wii U or a Wii remote and nunchuck, and it'd just be me versus you as king of the zombies, and you'd be trying to. Survive against them. I think um, that was a really, it was a really cool idea. Oh, for I sure. Really, uh, it was more cool when you were the one dropping zombies into the world. Right yeah. Down. Yeah, I saw you guys playing. It seemed like it was uh, pretty difficult to be the survivor compared to the yes. zombie spawn person. Especially, yeah, you can drop the zombies in pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, and you level them up too, so you eventually you're able to get ones that explode when they're shot. Mm -hmm. um, guys with armor and whatnot. There was one that was a capture the flag mode, which was kind of sloppy and just a mess, but there was one that was more about uh, just trying to see as many zombies as you can kill before you died, mm -hmm. and I really liked that. So once the health goes down, you're infected? Uh, yeah, you just turn into a zombie, or I think it makes it... There, you see that? You see that lunge? That would have been game over if, if they would have connected with that. But I shouldn't even really be... You shouldn't even really be trying to take on two zombies at once like that. Mm -hmm. You should try to kill one of them with a gun, and then you can take out the other one with the cricket bat to save ammo, which is cool. Again, like conceptually, like as a, as a zombie fan, as a survival horror fan, I love that sort of like be careful about what you do, and you have to kind of think um, on the fly with these every single um, interaction. Mm -hmm. But it's just not very satisfying in this game. Now that bat never breaks, does it? It's no, this is with you. This is also the only melee weapon you get in the entire game. So, or th that I found. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. So this is obviously a pretty small snippet of the world. Is the actual overworld pretty huge throughout the game? Or? There is. There is no overworld. It is just the sewers. Like your safe, your safe house leads to a sewer. You go through the sewers, and then you kind of go through these really repetitive and boring looking sewers and then you'll find one of those exit doors and it'll lead you out into an area that's just about the size of this. Um, and you'll go from area to area. And you'll sometimes come back to them and for example, you know, you need C4 here to blow open that wall and you can go and check that out later. So a little bit of backtracking and um, exploration involved there. Kind of a Metroidvania thing? Almost. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of Super Metroid in there, but um, for the most part, You'll you will you'll spend a lot of time backtracking too because you'll have to find your former self a lot, and there is no fast travel. Like there's fast travel in that. I guess I should say that there is fast travel in that your sewer does lead to other sewers, but you still have to do a lot of uh, running around on foot to to get back to where you were, and that is very annoying. So are there any big moments that you think that stand no out like? Uh, oh the overused set piece moment phrase, or is it primarily just small moment to moment? Yep, it's just small moment to moment. Like a zombie might grab you in a vent, mm -hmm. and then that will be that. Uh, but there's nothing crazy like, oh my god, this helicopter just smashed into Buckingham Palace. No, there's one part with a helicopter that crashed, surprise, and uh, but it was so unremarkable. 
and the fact that I had played like 12 hours before it got to that moment was, um, it made it, it was underwhelming by itself, but being surrounded by also just a mediocre game or subpar, mm -hmm. uh, it was even less impactful. So you're a pretty experienced survival horror fan. How many times around about do you say you would you had died during your playthrough? Um, God, I probably died like a, close to uh, the, the upper teens, maybe maybe 20 times. Um, and every time was more frustrating than the last. <laughs> um, a lot of them were just those cheap shots you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh. Is there any kind of character progression throughout the game? Like, do you get more inventory slots? Um, do you get more powerful? Yeah, you can get a bigger backpack, and yeah. then you f can find some um, weapon upgrades. But the weapon upgrades are pretty confusing. Uh, Oh, look at this. This is great use of the, uh, yeah, just kind of tap that open. <laughs> Good. Glad I did that. Um, and now I can go into the sewers. And this is sort of like the fast travel thing that we were talking about. You know, if, if I had gone to another place, uh, there'd be another green, you know, sewer icon someplace else. And I could go to there from any manhole lid. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this leads back to the safe house. I also want to note that the navigation, like yeah. finding your next, um, objective is so spotty. If you're not on the right map, if you warp to the wrong place, it's not going to tell you where it is. Uh, sometimes your map doesn't populate. Um, if you don't find like those those CC, like the, the surveillance cameras. The overall map and like the, the orientation of your map on your gamepad compared to the overview that it gives you when you're using the sewer system is different. Um, and then, you know, you throw in the fact that there is no like they're not really throwing down like a true north for you. Mm -hmm. uh, getting lost in a survival horror game is a big deal when there's zombies all over the place. So that ended up being very frustrating. So um, would you say ultimately that there are enough good ideas here that you hope that there is a sequel? I think that they could do some things better. And I think that, yeah, you know, again, like we were saying before, like conceptually, like this game's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And if they can kind of tighten up the combat and make the, uh, give you more options, maybe just like with the visuals, like the filter is so annoying at certain points when I can't actually like see something well because like they're trying to be fancy with this, you know, this filthy lens effect um, that just gets in the way of me enjoying the game. And, uh, but yeah, combat's a big, big one. And then the navigation and, uh, there is, there is definitely an opportunity to make a better game from this core concept. And we talked about it too. It, it seems like there's kind of a, a parallel between like Red Steel and that's another Ubisoft game. Yeah. And when the Wii launched, you know, it was kind of like, here's what the system can do. And then whether or not it was a, a fun game was kind of beside the point. In a lot of ways, it just felt like, here are some concepts we threw together. And, and in the case of Red Steel, you know, it, it kind of gelled in the sequel, in the, which was a really strong game. Is it loading door? So right now, zombies, are you defenseless right it could, now? They, the zombie could have followed me in right now. Mm -hmm. and I'd have to fight him off. Um, but if I had won the hit left, you'd just be sitting here waiting for the game to load. Can you back away from the door, or you have to stay in pretty close? Oh, I could, I could back away. Okay. Well, I think that's a pretty good look at zombie you, Tim. Overall, you, you had to sum it up yeah, four words. Um, I would say it's a cool concept. Very nice. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you, Mike and Tim. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you with another episode of Test Chamber.